Okay, so now that I have my layers set to shadow, I can take that shadow layer and now lock it out if I wanted to and go on to a highlight layer. So usually, you know, with one illustration, I'll have that. The whole illustration is either, it's going to have a bottom layer of blocked out color, it's going to have another layer of shadow, and then another layer of highlights. And that's a pretty straightforward, you know, kind of comic book look for it. Okay, so same rules apply. If I need to get a color based upon another color, what I'm going to do is have to unlock that just to get it. And then I can kind of look over here and see if there's something within that range that's highlights. So I got my shades, triax, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I'm not seeing very many highlights. Well, for highlights, I can choose, you know, maybe a monochromic appeal to it. Highlights are based upon light usually, so, you know, light within the scene. So are shadows too. I mean, if there's a blue light in the background, you know, I might have a bluish shadow on this right here too. So many things in color. I'm just showing you more of a monochromic approach to this illustration. Okay, so now, not only am I worried about color, but I'm worried about layer. I can go like this and start developing those highlights. So this object I would probably send under transparency over to like maybe a soft light or an overlay. If it's an overlay, you know, you could probably turn it down just a little bit. Now this seems, you know, like basic training 101 on color, but trust me, you need this in order to make good illustrations. Another way to kind of approach how to make highlights is this. Take and unlock the layer below it. Take the white arrow and highlight one of these groups. Hold Alt click and drag up. Okay, and make sure you got the inside of it, not the outside of it. Might have to expand it, and that's what I have to do. So right here, this color isn't really existing. So what I'm gonna have to do is go to Live Paint with my black arrow and expand it. That way I can grab the color on the inside. So I can either grab the outline or the color. The reason I do this is now when I hold Alt and click up, it will copy the color to the next layer. And then I can lock this one out. If I wanted a gradient, say, let's say I wanted a nice gradient instead of a harsh color change like these, well, what I can do here is go into um, Object, Create Gradient Mesh, and I could preview this and put maybe like six and six in here. And now I could choose from, you know, maybe a centered look or maybe an edge look too. Or I can do flat and choose it myself. How I do this is first highlight the points I want. Like I'll hold shift and hi highlight these anchor points. And then I can go over here to my hot color that was out here before. So that's something like this. And see how it's not really functioning correctly? It really helps if it's here in this. So what I have to do here is pull this one off. Get this one over here. That way I can click and drag this one over if I need to. 
that's the only bad thing about this workflow is I got to really kind of think ahead. And, you know, when it comes to illustration, I might just want to think on my feet. So that now that those are highlighted, I should be able to go over here and load that in. Okay. Good. Undo paint style. Okay, so it looks like everything is highlighted except for those two points or three points. So what I'm going to do is redo that. So this one, let's try this one. There we go. So again, kind of tricky, you know, to get it in there. Now if you're looking at an object or an actual illustration that might have like, you know, 50 pieces that you got to highlight, uh, you might look at this as a, a very hard workflow. But if you look at it, it looks like something you would make in Photoshop. Okay, now in the next video what I'm going to do is maybe look at a different way to kind of approach a highlight on an object.